president of the International Boxing Hall of Fame. And one thing I always start off with each year is if you see someone with a tag that says volunteer, thank them. Because they do it for no pay and uh, without them we couldn't make this happen. May they rest in peace. Next up, we'd like to uh, call on our mayor for a few words, Carla Deshaw. Carla needs help getting in. There we
because I know it's hot and uh, I know you don't want to listen to me. So I just want to take the opportunity to congratulate all the 2014 25th anniversary inductees. It's just amazing to have them here. It's amazing every year. And every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But uh, on behalf of the Village of Trustees, Village Trustees, the residents, the fans, the employees, the volunteers, congratulations. Enjoy the time. Thank you, Mayor. Next up, we'd like to introduce to you our Parade Grand Marshal, 2014 Miss America, Nina Devalori. to be here as your Miss America. I'm originally from Syracuse, so right in the, your backyard. Um, thank you. <laughs> but it's, I'm especially humbled to be here among such a phenomenal group of athletes. And one of the things I experienced last night that I said that my platform is celebrating diversity through cultural competency. And to be on stage in a group of Hall of Famers that is so diverse and championing this cause together is truly what makes us united. So thank you for having me and welcoming me with open arms and making me feel like Miss America even before I won. So thank you. And now folks, I have a uh, very short letter to read here. It was from a Hall of Famer that couldn't make our, our day. It reads, congratulations to the International Boxing Hall of Fame's 25th anniversary. Over the past 25 years, the International Boxing Hall of Fame has honored and preserved the legacy of boxing and its legendary stars. I know as well as any, the road to this year's Hall of Fame weekend was paved with dedication, hard work, and unwavering passion for the sport. I am still honored to have been a member of the inaugural class of inductees in 1990, a day that made me proud and one I will never forget. All my best, Muhammad Ali. our induction class and uh, we will start with our deceased and I'm going to call on the chairman of the selection committee, Mr. Herb Goldman. Thank you, Dan. International Boxing Hall of Fame 2014 deceased inductees. This fight for one and a half inch balls of our punches for more than 75 knockouts from 1910 to 1925. Future World Panama Champion Ken Williams, Young Brit, Philadelphia Palmore, and Eddie O'Keefe were among his many KO victims. Ranked by some as one of the sport's all time greatest featherweights, George K.O. Cheney! Time KO King, he won the IBU World Bowman title by knocking out Britain's Digger Stanley in 1912. Eugene Creaky, Jim Criscoll, Joe Parker, and Johnny Gallant were among his 80 knockout victories. Two time European Bowman champion Charles Ledoux. St. Paul Cyclone. He won the World Middleweight title by knocking out Al McCoy in 1917. One of the division's toughest, the outscored Jeff Smith, over 15 brutal rounds in Madison Square Garden, also known as the Harp. He won New York State's version of the World Middleweight crown by beating Dave Rosenberg in 1922, Mike O'Dowd. Pioneers. This native of Birmingham, England, won the American Bare Knuckle Championship and claimed the vacant world crown by defeating Mike McCall in 1873. He subsequently won a claim to the world title on the Queensbury Rules, Tom Allen. In the non participants, arguably Britain's greatest referee. He officiated in more than a thousand bouts from 1899 to 1931, including many for the British Empire and European titles. The premier at London's National Sporting Club, he worked such world title fights as Tommy Burns versus Conor Moyer in 1907, 
Willie Ritchie versus Freddie Walls for the light bank tournament in 1914, and Mickey Walker versus Tommy Milliken for the middle bank tournament in 1927, Eugene Corey. Thank you, the 2014 assistant artist, Don Ackman, please turn it away. Thank you, Herb. We do have a couple of people here to represent uh, some of our deceased. I'd like to call on first Craig uh, Kircher, grandson of George K.O. Shaney. He will be receiving a certificate from the Hall of Fame. Thank you. George Cheney was born in what has been described by the Baltimore Sun as the skinniest row house in East Baltimore. <clears throat> he made his way to the ring, so the story goes, as a promoter stopped to watch a fight in the alley and grabbed George by the arm and said, son, you need to be doing that in the gym, not the street. When he won his second purse of $150, he went back to that skinny house on Dallas Street, gave it to his mom, and said, you no longer have to shove oysters. <clears throat> and as they say, the rest is history. He fought from 1910 to 1926. But the George Cheney that my mother and I knew was the retired fighter. My mother wasn't born until after George retired. Um, George was incredibly civic-minded, community active, and he was the first person that local politicians and churches called on when they had a need for help to clothe, feed, or provide shelter for the needy. He made a lot of money in his career for those times, and more than willing to get back through the depression years. He was known as for bringing people in off the street and giving them a place to live at his house until he could help them find a job. So he stayed very active after he retired, mostly in community service. The George that I remember, <clears throat> um, I, he died when I was nine years old. So the George that I remember was a guy that would put me on his lap with these huge hands. He had hands that should have been on a man twice his size. And, uh, but obviously he was very gentle with his grandson who was the apple of his eye. Uh, so that's the George I remember. My mother is 86, living in Arizona with my sister. Couldn't be here this evening, but uh, says hi and thanks to everyone. I want to make a particular thank you also to um, the Baltimore chapter of the Boxing Veterans Administration, the Veteran Boxing Administra uh, Administration, I think, Association, Ring 101, and in particular Patrick Pen Penla Penella. and Frank Gilbert, uh, who were a big support to me and encouragement to me to be here today and to accept this. And also, this sweater George had made in the beginning of his career. So that makes this sweater about 100 years old. I want to leave this with the Hall of Fame.
got the grand nephew of Michael Dow, Joseph Hilstra. Papers such as the South London Advisor, and then as editor for Boxing News and Boxing Monthly. After relocating in Canada, he served as American correspondent for both outlets, and in 1992 was named American editor for Boxing Monthly, a position he still holds. His journalistic duties have taken him around the world, including fight venues all over the British Isles and Europe, plus major bouts in Las Vegas. His work currently appears regularly on FightNews.com and on his website, fightwriter.com, where he offers his insight and fight previews. 2014 Hall of Fame inductee from the Observer category, Graham Houston. Okay, well, I, I know who the stars are here, so I'll keep this short. You know, sometimes, you, you, you write articles and you write thousands of words and you wonder, God, do people really enjoy what I write? And sometimes you have little doubts and then you get inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame and, uh, and you think, you know what, people out there have liked what I've done over the years and I can't ask for more than that and I can't ask for more than to be inducted into the National Boxing Hall of Fame. I'm so grateful, so honored, so humbled. I want to thank everybody on the selection committee, Ed Brophy, and all his volunteers for their massive help. I want to thank all the fans who have come up to me and shaken my hand and wished me well. I appreciate it so much. And I guess I have to thank all the fighters that I've covered over the years, from the six rounders to the superstars, like the fighters on this bias here today. I appreciate that what they've done so much over the years. They've given me <coughs> so much enjoyment. So I'd just like to say thank you all, and thanks to all the fighters throughout history. Thank you. I'm going to read you what our certificate says uh, to these great inductees, and also I'm going to show you the ring. We'll read you again. Yes, there have been tens of thousands of people involved in the sport of professional boxing. Only a few are memorialized for their achievements in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. You are such a person. The ring presented to you today by the International Boxing Hall of Fame in Canastota, New York is one of a kind. Ten karat gold ring designed and crafted by LG Belfort Company and individually personalized for you. Inductees of the International Boxing Hall of Fame in Canastota, New York are de determined by the criteria of the Hall of Fame and the vote of the Boxing Writers Association of America and other boxing writers and historians from throughout the world. Congratulations on the high regard in which you have been held by this knowledgeable group. 
This ring symbolizes your accomplishments in the sport of boxing, and we hope you wear it always with pride. Come back often and visit us and honor us with your presence. founded sports promotional company Matchroom Sport in 1982 and continues to serve as its chairman. A lifelong lover of the sweet, of, uh, sweet science, he moved into the boxing promotion realm in 1987 and would ultimately present hundreds of British, European, and world title bouts for television. His first high-profile contest was Frank Bruno against Joe Buckner in 1987. Other standouts promoted in the 90s are Nigel Benn, Chris Eubank, Steve Collins, Nassim Ahmed, and Lennox Lewis. The current rosters of boxers under his banner include champions Harold Frotch, Darren Parker, Ricky Burns, and Scott Quigg. 2014 Hall of Fame inductee in the non-participant -ca category, Barry Hearn. I'm just going to enjoy myself for a couple of minutes, okay? This is all quite surreal, and you are all totally amazing. I've never seen anything. I thought I'd bought the t-shirt, but I've never seen anything like this last few days in Canisota. When I was growing up in the East End of London, I wanted to be a boxing champion, all my heroes were. Unfortunately, I had one big problem. I couldn't fight. <laughs> And then 30 years ago, I thought I'd found a way out. I dreamed of being a promoter. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything about the logistics. I didn't know anything about the politics. I didn't know so much about the history of promoting. But you know, I gave it a good go. And I'm a fast learner. The first fight, the big, first big fight I ever did, Bruno, Bruno attracted 35,000 people. Hit 18 and a half million audience just in the UK alone. And the worst thing about it was, I was hooked. And then onwards, I just didn't stop doing shows and didn't stop loving every day of my life, as I do every single day. Not just the day, but every hour and every minute. And I bring an enthusiasm that is insatiable and has been passed on to some wonderful, wonderful people in my office. My boxing manager for 20 or six years, John Wishhausen, is here today. My son can't be here because he's got a world title fight on Saturday, and you know that work comes first. The great ethic of every true promoter. So I've had the greatest time. I've enjoyed the company of amazing people, amazing athletes. We've had good days, we've had bad days, and we've had sensational days that will live in my memory forever. Today is one of those days. You know, I've got to thank everyone I've worked with. There are far too many boxers. I've done 650 shows. I can't remember every single one of my age. What I do know is I hope you've acted with honesty and integrity at every level. And I hope we are be happy to take the sport to the next level wherever we can. And the secret is competitive fights to entertain the fans, to make those fights happen, and when they do, to treat everyone with respect, both the fans and the boxers. You know, my little tiny empire is in good hands. Last Saturday, my son promoted a fight you may have seen on HBO. Carl Froch against George Groves, 80,000 people in every state. That's what boxing means. And now, with all the other great operators in this room, you know, we have Don King, we have Bob Aaron, we have Don Jarkin, we have so many Hall of Fame promoters. I'm so honoured to be in their presence. They are the people that I looked up to. And Oscar de la Hoya, well, listen, Oscar's still a legend anyway, whichever way you look at Oscar. He's got five different ways of being a legend. And we're very happy that we're working with Oscar Deloria on some fights at the moment, so I'm not going to forget him because, hey, I've got to get a check from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he smiles, but he can be mean as well, you know. You saw him in the ring. <laughs> but, you know, we are so lucky to be involved in this quite unique sport, and we're surrounded by quite unique people. They should have our respect, they should have our admiration, and they should have our support. All we have to do is play straight with them, and we know they will play straight with us. To the people of Canasota, to Ed Brophy, all his organising committee, these wonderful helpers that are everywhere, thank you for giving me a day I never dreamed in my lifetime I would experience. So thank you to all you guys for your support.
professional career began as a freelance photographer for, for, for Sports Illustrated in 1960. He remained at that story publication until 1978, with 170 of his photos landing on the cover. Following his tenure at SI, he began as, as a staffer at Time Magazine, where his photos appeared on 40 covers. His works include many of the most iconic images of boxing history, including Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston in their 1965 rematch, and the innovative overhead photo taken from the rafters of the Houston Astrodome of Ali standing victorious over Cleveland Williams in 1966. His photos have appeared in major magazines, Saturday Evening Post, Look, Life, and Newsweek. 2014 Hall of Fame inductee in the Observer category, Neil Leifer. Michael Buffett, 
Murray and Bobby Goodman, two of the best publicists ever. I think they're both in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Bob Arum, Mark Taffet, Don King, Bill Kaplan, Jerry Cooney, Oscar De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad. I photographed them all, and I just love looking at the pictures, and I've enjoyed even more getting to spend a little bit of time and getting to know them a little bit here. I sat next to Oscar yesterday at dinner, and maybe I am. And then, last but not least, there's the greatest, Muhammad <laughs> Ali. Uh, no photographer, for that matter, no writer, no television commentator, nobody ever had a better subject than Muhammad Ali. He just loved, he loved the camera, he loved every microphone he ever saw. Quite honestly, he just made a hero out of all of us who were lucky enough to cover him. So the second question I'm asked all the time is usually on the college campus where I lecture occasionally to photojournalism students. And the young students come up to me and they say, Neil, how can we have a career like the one you've had? And my answer is so simple. I look at them and of course they immediately think I'm full of it when I say to them, it's easy. You can definitely have, I'll guarantee you a career as good as mine. Just go out and find yourself a subject like Muhammad Ali, hitch your wagon to it, and stick around for 40 years and you'll be a superstar. So, I want to dedicate my being conducted today to the great Muhammad Ali, one of the great human beings of all time. boxing team from 1962 to 1965 before turning pro in 66, then he switched from boxer to referee in 1972. His long list of major bouts include Pryor, Aguayo II, Hagler Hearns, Leonard Hagler, Tyson Bruno, Leonard Hearns II, and Chavez Taylor. With 167 championship bouts to his credit, he announced his retirement after working the Floyd, Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Diego Corrales bout in, in 2001. He returned to the ring in 2004 and refereed two more years, including the Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Zab Judah bout in, in 2006. He remains active in boxing, operating his boxing club in Las Vegas. 2014 Hall of Fame inductee in the non-participant category, Richard Steele.
and show me that you appreciated what I have done. I love you all for it. This memory will be with me for the rest of my days. I want to thank you and Brophy, this organization that you put together, your staff, all the people that is important to this International Boxing Hall of Fame. I want to thank you right off the bat. The fans, oh wow. You guys are great. And if I had enough rings, I'd give you all one. <laughs> You know, I said, 58 years, I'm putting my ring on first. <laughs> and sir, I was 12 years old in junior high school, John Adam Junior High School, and fighting and messing around, not doing what I was supposed to do. My mother and my teachers, they was pretty fed up with me. One day, a young man came up to me that changed my whole life. You know, <clears throat> sometimes you just need a purpose. Sometimes you just need a reason to change and be better. So this young man came to me and he said, Richard, you're always fighting. He said, did you know my father is a world champion? I said, no. He said, if you will come to me, with me, at my house, I can show you his belts, and I can introduce you to my father. <coughs> so after school, we went there. And he walks through the door, and he said, this is my father, Chalky Wright. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Chalky Ryan, you know Chalky, had over 200 fights. He was named one of the hardest punchers in boxing. Chalky comes to me and he gives me this phantom punch in the stomach. And he said, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine. We go in the back, a young man sitting on the couch. He said, this is my friend, Sugar Ray Robinson. <laughs> Sugar Ray Robinson, I said, gee, I have heard a couple of your fights on the radio with my dad. I cannot believe that I'm standing in front of you today. One of the greatest middleweights of our time. We shook hands. So you know what I did next? Albert, my friend that took me to meet Sugar Ray Robinson and Charlie Wright, he became one of my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I hung at his house all the time. I could, you won't believe this, but next week, we go into his house, we turn the corner, and it was a big black Cadillac parked in front of his house. He says, you know who car that is? <laughs> no. That's Joe Lewis's car. <laughs> <laughs> we took all the front. <laughs> we run through the front door and he says, Joe, Joe, like he was a long time friend of his. And Joe turned around and picked him up and gave him a big bear hug, started shadow boxing with him. I said, my God. He said, this is my friend Richard. He likes to fight. <laughs> I'm cool with that one now. <laughs> He likes to fight. He said, shook my hand. 
He said, hello, Richard. You like to fight, huh? I said, yes. He said, but I'm going to give you some advice. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm telling both of you guys that you got to train. Are you in training? <clears throat> I was a street fight. I ain't never been to the gym in my life. But you can believe. Here I have Matt Sugary Robinson. Now I have Matt Joe Lewis. Man, I'm going to a gym. <laughs> Forget the straight street fighting. I'm going to really learn how to box. And that's what we did. We went to the fam famous Los Angeles Hoover Street Gym the next day. <coughs> Albert and I. His father, Chalky, had called a trainer that he knew there. Maybe some of y'all might remember me. He called Eddie Futch. <laughs> and here I am, 12 years old, a street fighter. I go into the gym, and Mr. Futch, doing a favor for Chalky, he tells him, come on over here, boys, and I'm going to show you a couple of things. He showed us a couple of things I still remember today. And it felt very small. So we are in the gym, in and out. I'm trying to play football. You know how it is. Kids, 12 years old, and now I'm 14, now I'm 15. I'm coming back to the gym once in a while. So when I get to be 17, I had to find somewhere to go. So I chose the Marine Corps. Yes, sir. So I go into the Marine Corps, so I take the, the lessons that Eddie taught me, and I tried out for the boxing team. I made the boxing team. I could not believe it. I made the boxing team, and the first year after that, I win all Marine Corps championship. I'm a Marine champion. That was in 1963. Now you know what's coming next. 64 is the Olympics. Now I'm going, I've been chosen to represent the Marine Corps in the Olympic trials. Do you understand what boxing can do for a kid? Do you see where I'm going with this boxing? Why I love it so much? I go to the Olympic trials, I win my first fight, I lost my second one, they said. <laughs> <laughs> so, I get an honorable discharge out of the Marine Corps about that time. And Eddie said, well, what you going to do? Eddie Fletcher, I'm talking about. Turn professional. I turned professional. I fought like five years under Eddie and Jackie McCoy. I get injured a couple of times. I'm training with Ken Norton. You know how big he was. He breaks my ribs. He's supposed to be a friend of mine. <laughs> We was in the Marine Corps together. And, and I tell you like it was, I used to give him a run for his money when he first started, you know. So I guess he was trying to get even. So I had to retire from real injuries. And get a phone call from the California State Athletic Commission. We was thinking about you being a referee. A referee? Man, I don't want to be no referee. So I went to the gym the next day and I told Eddie, I said, do you know they asked me to be a referee? He sit me down he said, man, let me tell you something. That is an honor. It is an honor to be a referee. Do you know how many blacks is being offered that job? You're the second in the last 25 years. 25 years. 
Let's see if it fits. Yep, it fits. I'm going to follow that one then. <laughs> I just want to start off by saying some thank yous. Obviously, uh, huge thanks to, to Ed Brophy and the All the Fame Committee um, for making this weekend so special for myself and for all the finest here. Um, all the volunteers that have done such a terrific job. Um, it's been unbelievable. I will never forget this for the rest of my life, you know. To see these great champions and nominees, reference for all this. And to be nominated on the 25th anniversary against two absolutely special fighters in Oscar de la Hoya and Timo Trinidad. Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say wow. I'm just so humbled to be here in this presence. Um, also, people here with me, the girlfriend of Lucy, the dad. Unfortunately, my mum and all my family back home, all the fans, unbelievable. Um, wow. I just want to talk a bit about my career. Uh, I started boxing in, uh, at the age of nine, eight, nine years old. I wanted to play football. My dad's been Italian. I wanted to football is in soccer. Okay, yeah, he's not, not, not for football. <laughs> I wanted to be a soccer player. Um, I just remember my dad bought me a speedball uh, at the age of eight, eight nine years old. I was pretty good with my hands, uh, but I preferred football. I wanted to go play football, so my dad's a musician. My dad's never boxed in his life, you know? He knew how to fight, he knew the education of boxing, he's never boxed, okay? So, I want to be a footballer, and I think I remember being freezing cold in, in the winter, left on the subs bench, shivering, not scoring any goals. Then he went to the boxing gym, and I started beating people up, I thought, you know what? I like this boxing, man. I think <laughs> oh, this, is, this feels good. And my hands were a lot faster than my feet. And um, 1982, it was good, well, not 1982, 1985, I won my first British ABA championship uh, at 36 kilograms. I think that's five stone ten, I don't know, in pounds. And that feeling of being a winner, of being the champion, was the most amazing, amazing feeling ever. And that was my dream. I went to school, I skipped school, I trained like a professional. My father kicked me in the ass. Sorry, where did last? <laughs> I didn't have a choice. You know, rain, sleep, or snow, you're going to go for a run because he knew my talent. He knew that that was my way out to do something in my life. He saw the talent, he nurtured it, he pushed me. You know, I didn't have a job, I had no funding. Um, I should have went to the Barcelona Olympics, but I got, that's another story. I got robbed. I won three consecutive EBA titles in three different ways. I love winning, and what can I say, you know, I turned professional in October 93. Won my first fight in, in Cardiff. Um, I think I won about 17, 18 fights before I won the bridge title, and then I fought the guy called Chris Eubank. Now Chris Eubank had boxed 20 odd fights. I, I think I boxed about 19 fights, knocked everybody out in the first three rounds. To be honest, I was, a, I was a very cocky at that age, you know, very cocky. And I just looked at Chris Eubank and I said, Chris, I'm going to knock you out. And he looked at me and he said, I'm going to take you to one place you've never, ever been. <laughs> I'm going to take you to the trenches in this fight, man. You've never been in the fight yet. And I'm thinking, trenches? What does that mean? Okay. <laughs> okay, come out the first round. And Mr. Joe Cortez will tell you this because he was refereeing my fight against Chris Eubank. And I knocked him down in the first 15 seconds. And I'm thinking, I thought this guy had a good chin. And I was looking at my dad thinking, I'm going to knock this guy out. Trust me, Chris Eubank got up and he gave me the toughest fight I ever, ever could have dreamt of. Took me to them trenches that you were talking about. <laughs> and believe me, I couldn't move for two or three days, you know. Um, I was exhausted after six rounds. I'd never done more than six, seven rounds in a real war, in a real fight. And I was so proud to come through that fight, and it was so hard. And to that, to the end of my career, that was by far my hardest fight. So I was so proud of that. Um, 
<coughs> that didn't come easy. I wanted to unify the titles. Like every single fighter wants to unify titles. It's all about politics and business. I was fighting fighters that had just got beat. Six former world champions. I was injured all the time. I pulled out of a lot of fights. Sorry, Glenn. We you at? Glenn Johnson was winning the promo for his world show for. And it was, to be honest, it was frustrating for me. You know, I wasn't making no money. Um, I fight one, once a year, I think, between 1999 and 2001. Thank God, everything came everything come together. And then finally, in 2006, I finally got my big fight against Jeff, Jeff Lacey, where I was a big underdog. Um, people wrote me off. I was injured again going into that fight, but my dad just just took me and he says, I owe it all to my father, I'm just going to pull out, I was injured, I damaged my wrist, and I thought, I'm going to fight this guy. And dad says to me, Dad Joe, you have to fight this fight, even with one hand, because I'm proud of you no matter what. You need to fight this fight, this is the fight you've been waiting for all your career. And trust me, Joe, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do a number on this guy. And just to hear my dad say that he's proud of me, and no matter what happens, thank you, Dad, for the belief in me. Give me that confidence. <laughs> and then, and then I, onwards and upwards, you know, from the age of 34, I started getting my big fights, you know, um, going against Michael Kessler, fighting in front, in front of 50,000 people in my home crowd in, in, in Cardiff, Wales. Unified all the belts, been Ring Magazine champion. There was only one thing that was missing, and that was coming to the States, which meant so much to me to come to America, to come and fight in Vegas, step up and fight B Hop, Bruno Hopkins. You know, I actually bought my own ticket after the Castle fight. <coughs> I don't think I got I think I had a con. Thank you. I didn't pay for the, the ringside team. But I had, a, I had to pay for my ticket to come over, to pay for the hotel. For the sole reason was to go and try and get a fight in America, bumping the Hopkins, which I did in the press room, which was fantastic. The fight was made, winning the two-way world championship, beating the number one fighter in America meant so much to me, and to finish my career off in Madison Square Garden, the mecca of boxing, from where I brought up in a small little town in South Wales, in the little leisure centers I used to fight, to finish off fighting Madison Square Garden against a legend, and one of the greatest fighters ever lived in Roy Jones Jr. was um, most amazing, surreal thing. I thank God and thank all my fans, my family that's always been here for me. Mm -hmm. well, um, yeah, so um, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for being here and giving me the, one of the best weekends. I'll never ever forget this moment. <laughs> Gracias, gracias. Thank you. Thank you. 
Pero me siento bien contento de estar aquí con todos y cada uno de los presentes. I'm very happy to be here with all of you present. Quiero empezar saludando a, a, a los referees, todos los referees que están aquí, amigos. I want to first uh, acknowledge all the referees here present. A todos los es campeones mundiales de boxeo que están aquí también me están acompañando a todos. All the ex champions that are coming in here as well. Especialmente a todos los campeones de Puerto Rico. Y a todo el personal de Salón de la Fama, especialmente Ed, Ed Brophy. Well, the personal from the uh, Hall of Fame, especially Ed Brophy. Y no puedo dejar pasar por alto a los dos campeones que están siendo saltados de la tarde de hoy junto conmigo, Oscar de la Boya y Joey Gazzaghi. Quiero, de mi más profundo de corazón, de más profundo de mi corazón, From the bottom of my heart. Quiero hablarle, hablarle a, a todos ustedes. I want to speak to all of you. Eh, mi carrera, gracias a Dios, una carrera de, desde muy niño. My career started from a very young age. Mi padre hizo un recuerdo en su tiempo un gimnasio, que, que de verdad que un gimnasio muy, muy chico. I remember those days, uh, my father in his, his gym, it was a very small gym. Let's go a little bit for the back. Mi padre fue boxeador, fue boxeador profesional. Uh, my father was a professional boxer. Campeón nacional de Puerto Rico. A natural champion in Puerto Rico. Ya se retira del museo, pero junto con un primo de él quiso montar un gimnasio para, para llevar a cabo lo que había aprendido. So when he retired, uh, along with his cousin, they started a the gym to, you know, teach others what he had learned from his career. De toda la, la familia, primo, Tito Tuñape se encaminó junto con mi padre al mundo del museo. All, all the family, all the cousins, uh, the Trinidad's uh, focus on the boxing as a career. Somos seis hermanos de la familia. We're six brothers and sisters in the family. Recuerdo que mi hermano Juan Carlos también hizo algunas peleas. I remember even my brother Juan Carlos did some fights. Jonathan no ha acogido el camino de, de boxeo, pero sí un gran, un gran estudiante. Uh, Jonathan didn't fall uh, my footsteps in boxing, but he's a great, great student. Y un gran ser humano. Great human being. Y de verdad que espero que siga siendo igual como es siempre. And I hope that he continues to, to continue to be like that. Desde Dubai siempre salíamos en la tarde, después luego, luego ya desde la escuela llegábamos, salíamos a gimnasio. Uh, every afternoon in Kubei, we would go, after school, we would go to the gym. Pero si, un antes pues, si antes pues, siempre mi padre, después que llegaba de, llegaba de trabajo, con mucho esfuerzo, salíamos para el gimnasio a hacer lo que en sí podíamos hacer, que era 100% el museo. So my dad, every day after, in the afternoon when he comes from work, he would take us to the gym and start training. Junto conmigo había muchos, muchos muchachos del, del barrio, barrio de Cupey, pueblos aledaños, porque de verdad que eh, Ignacio pues, se acercaban se acercaba mucho, mucho en esa área y mi padre con mucho gusto siempre a todos lo contaba de igual manera. And there was a great gathering of the kids from the neighborhood, kids from uh, surrounding towns. Uh, it was always full of kids, uh, my dad always treated everybody equally. Y por ese Ignacio de Cupey pasaron muchos jóvenes, muchos, muchos jóvenes, muchos jóvenes. And through that gym in Coupey, many, many youth have gone, uh, have gone through those doors. Y día a día poníamos el esfuerzo para así poder hacer 
el mejor, el mejor club de boxeo que por muchas ocasiones fue el club de Coupe. For many times, uh, through a lot of effort, we tried to make it the best uh, boxing club that we could. And for a long time, it was the best one in Coupe. Así lo decían muchas personas y así lo lo llevamos, lo llevamos a cabo año tras año cuando recibíamos los premios, recibíamos los premios del del mejor gimnasio de Puerto Rico. And many, many, uh, many would say that we were one of the best boxing club, and we would affirm such affirmations after a lot of the championships, a lot of fights we would win, and the victories uh, that you would, would make throughout the years. Quiero decirle que no fue fácil, fue un, un trabajo de equipo. I just want to say it was not easy, it was a team effort. Ya para 1990, hago mi debut como profesional. By 1990, I made my debut as a professional boxer. En el cual, gano mi debut con lo que hago técnico. And I went by TKO. Y de ahí adelante, mi carrera subió de gran manera. And after that, my career took off in a great way. Tenía, eh, en mi primer de combate, nueve de ellos eran por nocaut. Well, my first ten uh, fights, nine uh, were I won by knockout. Ya en la pelea número 20, la pelea mía número 20, de ahí se fue el título mundial. My 20th fight uh, was for the uh, world title. En el cual ganó por nocaut en el segundo salto frente a Maurice Blocker. And which I beat Maurice Blocker <coughs> on the second round by knockout. Y de ahí la, mi carrera siguió surgiendo y gracias a Dios pude ganar cinco títulos mundiales en toda mi carrera. And after that my career just uh, continued to grow and I was able to win five different uh, world titles in different divisions. Yo... Uh, and I, th I, think I, you, I think I know that you know that for a for boxer, this career is very hard. Pero se puede, se puede. Yo la hice, yo voy a decir que la hizo, Oscar de la Hoya lo hizo, But ya es, estamos. It is possible, uh, I did it, Joe Gasaki did it, Oscar de la Hoya did it, uh, and here we are. Y con todo el corazón, estoy más que orgulloso de que hoy día lo voy a reconocer por más aún de haber sido boxeador por toda casi una vida. And uh, today we deep, uh, deeply felt from my heart, uh, very proud to be recognized uh, for, for being in my boxing career uh, that has been basically my whole life. Quiero dejarles saber que la familia mía es una familia que siempre me ha apoyado, siempre me ha estado conmigo en el And I want to let you know that my family has always supported me, has always been there for me throughout my entire career. My wife is right here in front of me. Chao, Santiago. My five daughters. They come to me, thank you for being here with me. My brothers. Que están aquí conmigo, Juan Carlos, María, Maori, gracias, Jonathan, Natalie, que están aquí conmigo. Nelly, gracias por estar aquí conmigo también. Nelly, A todos y cada uno del grupo Team Trinidad. Gracias por estar aquí. You always have me, uh, and I always appreciate it with all my heart, and I always will. Quiero que siempre lo hablo con mucho orgullo. La persona que, que gracias a Dios me trajo al mundo, mi madre y Madoris, de aquí al frente. Saber que 
Sin este, esta persona que voy a mencionar ahora. That this person that I'm about to mention without him. Lo más seguro, estoy seguro que no tuviese hoy parado aquí. More than likely, actually, I'm completely sure I would not be here. Aparte de ser mi padre. Besides being my father. Ha sido el mejor manejador. The best manager. Ha sido el mejor trainer. The best trainer. Con todo el respeto a todos los creadores y manejadores que están aquí hoy. With all the respect to all managers and trainers. <laughs> Porque luchó día a día a día con todo para poder, poder llevarme a lo más grande a estar aquí hoy en día. Son las I'm very proud of you, Dad, like I've always said. Sumamente orgulloso. Extremely proud. Porque Everybody that is involved with the museum and not involved with the museum, everyone here. 
Saludos a toda la prensa que está aquí presente. I want to acknowledge all the press that's here present. Especially for all of Puerto Rico. And if I've forgotten something, please excuse me. Pero, amo el museo, amo mi gente, Puerto Rico. Just so I can fulfill my dreams. 
So Father, without you, this wouldn't be possible. And I recognize that and I thank you and I love you very much. I would like to thank my mother who passed away nearly 25 years ago. She wasn't able to see my success as a professional fighter, wasn't able to see my success as an Olympic champion, but I've always known and I've always felt that she's always been looking down at me looking out for me and taking care of me every single step of the way. So thank you, Mother. Today marks an incredible personal achievement, but it is only the latest milestone that never would have been possible without my family, my friends, and most importantly, the fans. The World Championships in six different weight classes, the founding of Golden Boy Promotions and my foundation. My entire journey from East LA to this moment has been a partnership between myself and the millions of people that who have supported me, first as an amateur and then as a champion and now as a promoter, businessman and philanthropist. I share this honor with each and every single person here, the fans. Thank you very much. I am particularly excited to see the so many of my fellow fighters here today, and I am astonished by the names who I am joining in this special fraternity. So many of these men were not only dominant inside the ring, but were and are larger than life outside the ropes. Alexis Arguello, may he rest in peace. Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Jack Dempsey, George Foreman, Julio Cesar Chavez. The list goes on and on and on. And of course, Felix Trinidad, who I am most privileged to join today in this induction ceremony. Tito and I grew up together in boxing and then our careers moved on parallel tracks until we met one day in 1999 in what some call the fight of the millennium. He was undefeated, I was undefeated, the Mandalay Bay was packed, tens of millions tuned in, the fight went the distance, and you know what? Never mind. <laughs> It's a lot less painful standing up here today in a suit than it was going 12 rounds with Felix Trinidad. <laughs> what a great man. But Tito and Joe Kalzaki are both giants. And I am truly honored to join them in these hollowed halls. It's hard to believe, but my first professional fight was more than two decades ago. And during that time, much of the sport, boxing has changed and much has stayed the same. What has stayed the same is a sense of community and family that, per that pervades every corner. I said this last night, but I want to say it again. As a fighter, we have lived every different special kind of life that will bond us together forever, regardless of age, race, or upbringing. Nearly all of us are defined by humble beginnings, incredibly hard work, and passion for our trade. That was true yesterday. It is true today and will be true tomorrow. As I walked around Canastota for the last couple of days, and in particular the halls itself, I was reminded of something I said a while ago. Boxing is a never-ending story 
New fighters keep coming along. Opponents keep popping up. The next superstar is always on the way. Even as this incredible group of gladiators goes into the halls tomorrow, the next great crop of fighters is already on the rise. Which brings me back to what has changed about our sport. When I hung up my gloves, I just couldn't leave the sport. Because boxing has historically been such a proud part of America. The sport of kings, we call it. And when I founded Golden Boy Promotions, it was with that history in mind that my team and I set out to continue the rich tradition of what I feel is the greatest sport ever invented. Ladies and gentlemen, boxing is wonderful. But today our sport is not what it was once. Many of you know I have faced significant personal challenges in my life over the last few years. In short, I went through hell. And when I was struggling with my own issues, the one constant I could come back to, besides my family, was boxing. We can, must, and will make boxing the crown jewel of the sporting world again. We must put aside the egos that have damaged our brand and sullied our reputation. We, the promoters, must stop carrying pretty grudges that serve no purpose but divide our sport. We must give the fans that they want the fights that they want. And we must start today. You have my pledge that from this moment forward, Golden Boy Promotions will double down on a very simple concept that we strive to achieve every single day. Putting on the best fights at the best venues for the best fans in the world. With that, I'd like to thank the Boxing Hall of Fame, my fellow inductees, and all of you for coming today. I am truly humbled by this honor, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Let's give all these great champions a hand for working.